Everything from fighter jets to ICBMs, aircraft carriers and unmanned platforms, stealth planes, special operations and everything in between. Let us dive into the history and achievements of military technology in this episode of Mill Power. At Vandenberg Space Force Base, the United States Space Force's Space Launch Delta 30 ensures America's Minuteman 3 ICBMs are tested for readiness and reliability. At random, a missile was selected from one of the three launch sites Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, and Francis E. Warren Air Force Base, Wyoming. The missiles are then removed from their silo, disassembled, transported to Vandenberg, reassembled, then loaded into a silo. SLD-30 routinely tests both variants of launch signal in use. From underground crew launch to airborne launch control system, ALCS, on board US Navy E-6 Mercury's. We're going to walk through the sequence of a missile's test flight. From launch at Vandenberg Space Force Base, to splashdown near the Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. The silo doors open, keys are turned, and the missile's booster ignites. Three seconds after leaving the silo, the ICBM pitches, aiming the missile in the direction of its target. The missile rotates 45 degrees along its longitudinal axis seven seconds later. Only 19 seconds after ignition, the missile breaks Mach 1 at an altitude of 8,300 feet. 20 seconds later, it's moving at Mach 3, breaking 38,000 feet. Just 45 seconds into its flight, the missile performs a second roll maneuver at 50,000 feet. Just a minute after launch, the first stage separates 100,000 feet above the ocean below. The missile continues to accelerate and climb separating the aerodynamic shroud 78 seconds into its ascent. At T plus two minutes, the missile has reached an astonishing 315,000 feet, or nearly 60 miles. The RV shroud, the top of the missile that covers the re-entry vehicles, is jettisoned. Two seconds later, stage two separates. Stage three ignites and propels the post-boost vehicle closer to its intended target. Shortly thereafter, Stage 3 will separate and the propulsion system rocket engine comes to life. The post-boost vehicle terminates its boost at a predetermined location and stabilizes itself in order to release the RVs, any decoys, and chaff to fool anti-ballistic missile systems. Spin gas generators are set off, rotating the RV and stabilizing it as it re-enters the atmosphere. The RV descends to its target, splashing down in the Pacific. These tests ensure America's only land-based nuclear deterrent is safe, reliable, and ready for action at a moment's notice. However, from 1986 to 2005, the US Air Force commanded a larger, more powerful, and more accurate missile. The LGM-118 Peacekeeper. Even as the new Minuteman 3s were deploying in 1971, Strategic Air Command was looking forward to a future replacement relying on more modern technology for a more powerful and more accurate missile carrying multiple variable yield warheads. However, the path to a new ICBM would be hampered by ballooning federal deficits and subsequent cost-cutting measures. There was also ongoing debate on the need and survivability of another land-based ICBM system. Increasing accuracy of Soviet missiles led to fears of a preemptive strike crippling both bombers and land-based missiles, two of the three legs of America's nuclear triad. Therefore, pressure increased to fund and support existing SLBM systems 
making the pitch for a new land-based weapon and uphill battle. In spite of this, Headquarters Air Force designated the program and weapon as MX, Missile Experimental, and assigned development to the Space and Missile Systems Organization, SAMSO, a direct descendant of General Schriever and Colonel Hall's Western Development Division. In July 1976, politics deployed another barrier to the MX system as Congress blocked any consideration of funding for silo-based ICBMs. The fear of a first strike wiping America's ability to respond would sink the MX before it ever took flight if the issue was not addressed. To rectify this and alleviate Congress's fears, multiple wild concepts were investigated, including underground rail systems to move missiles between launch locations. On the 12th of June, 1979, President Carter made the decision to proceed with full-scale engineering development of the MX system, along with horizontal multiple protective shelter basing options. President Reagan would cancel the horizontal shelter option in 1981, hoping for a more rapid deployment of the ICBM. On top of this, the President was a proponent of basing MX in super-hardened Titan II or Minuteman silos. The president would later refine his proposal with a closely spaced basing concept, where MX silos were grouped in a triangular trapezoid, about 14 miles long and one mile wide. The idea was that the detonation of the first inbound nukes would deflect or destroy other inbound warheads. He would also denote his preference for the official name of the MX missile, the Peacekeeper. Congress took one look at both the hardened silo and CSB options and went, yeah, how about no? Denying both basing options and refusing to approve any new MX funding. Back into a corner, President Reagan directed Headquarters Air Force to conduct a technical assessment on the MX program and possible basing options. The solution? a highly accurate missile, produced in sufficient enough numbers to eliminate the advantage of a preemptive strike. In response to Headquarters Air Force's assessment, the President established a Commission on Strategic Forces led by Lieutenant General Brent Scowcroft. The Commission would recommend the immediate deployment of 100 MX missiles in existing Minuteman silos paired with a mobile MGM-S ICBM Mobile Surface Attack Guided Missile Small ICBM, which would become the hilariously named MGM-134 Midget Man, which would never see service. Congress and the President agreed with the Commission's finding, and on the 10th of August 1983, Secretary of Defense Kaspar Weinberg instructed the Air Force to develop and deploy 100 peacekeepers in Minuteman silos at F.E. Warren Air Force Base. The new Peacekeeper missile performed its first flight on the 17th of June, 1983, flying from Vandenberg Air Force Base, 4,200 miles away to the Kwajalein Atoll Missile Test Range in the Pacific Ocean. The missile deployed six MIRVs, each performing perfectly. Entering service in 1986, the LGM-118A Peacekeeper was a monster of a missile system and is arguably the single most powerful land-based system the United States has ever deployed. Significantly larger than its LGM-30G predecessor, the Peacekeeper stood 71 feet tall compared to 60 feet, 7.7 feet wide versus 5.5 feet and weighed an absurd 195,000 pounds, over two and a half times as much as a Minuteman III at 75,000 pounds. In fact, the Peacekeeper's first stage alone weighed more than one and a half times the total weight of a Minuteman III. Despite being an enormous weapon, the airframe's Kevlar epoxy composite made the Peacekeeper much lighter than other ICBMs in its class. Paired with an improved propulsion system, this allowed each peacekeeper to deploy up to 12 MIRVs, Q 
carrying the W87 warhead, each with a yield anywhere from 300 to 475 kilotons, to ranges in excess of 6,000 miles. However, the Strategic Arm Reduction Treaty, Start 1, between the United States and the USSR, restricted the number of warheads to no more than 10. A single 475 kiloton explosion, 1,000 feet in the air, will create a fireball more than a half a mile wide. The heat, reaching higher than the surface of the sun, vaporizing anyone and anything within it. The heat flash from the fireball will cause certain third degree burns to anyone exposed up to 5.6 miles away, and set humans, trees, and other objects within three miles on fire. The supersonic shockwave will flatten most concrete reinforced buildings within one mile of ground zero and collapse most residential buildings within 2.41 miles. Now imagine that carnage, but 10 times over across a city or multiple military targets. Due to being stored and launched from silos made for the smaller Minuteman 3, the Peacekeeper would be the first and only US land-based ICBM to be cold launched being blown out of the silo using highly pressurized steam prior to the first stage igniting 150 feet off the ground, minimizing damage to the silos and allowing them to be reloaded more quickly. To assist in the launching process, the Peacekeeper had protective shock absorbing tiles placed around the fuselage. These would fall away as the missile left the silo, reducing drag. The Peacekeeper was also the most accurate ICBM the US has ever deployed capable of delivering its MIRVs within 130 to 300 feet of its intended target. This means even a relative miss of 500 feet would still strike its objective within its nuclear detonation. The Peacekeeper's incredible capabilities would make an adversary think twice about a preemptive strike as even a small number of surviving Peacekeepers would cripple a nation with devastating results. Using the opening scenario concerning the Black Brant Scare, a handful of peacekeepers making it out of their silos and targeting Russia's five largest cities would put over 22 million lives in the crosshairs. Utilizing the theory of mutually assured destruction, or MAD, and its impressive counter-strike capacity, the LGM-118 Peacekeeper embodied peace through absolute strength. In spite of the missile's insane performance capabilities, the changing geopolitical landscape would bring an early retirement for America's most advanced ICBM. By the time the Peacekeeper came into service in 1986, the global situation was already shifting. In 1985, Congress had limited funding to Peacekeeper procurement, effectively limiting deployment numbers to 50 missiles until the President could provide a more survivable basing option for the other 50 procured. The proposed solution was the Peacekeeper Rail Garrison, a concept where two Peacekeeper missiles would be stored and launched from train cars, 25 trains in total nationwide. The trains would be painted to look like a standard industrial engine and be deployed on America's enormous rail network during times of high geopolitical tension effectively removing the chance of losing all peacekeepers in a preemptive strike and allowing a calamitous counter-strike. With the Cold War cooling down and the gradual dissolution of the Soviet Union from 1988 to 1991, the need for the rail garrison was absent and the program was canceled in 1991, leaving silo basing as the only option. Peacekeepers were set on alert, ready at a moment's notice for the next decade. The Peacekeeper's time as America's go-to silo launch deterrent would end with the ratification of the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty 2, Start 2, between the US and Russia in 2000. One of Start 2's largest components was its effect on MIRVs. Due to MIRV-capable missiles being able to carry multiple warheads and decoys, they are a destabilizing force as their capabilities make a first strike the best option. For this reason, land-based multi-MIRV-capable missiles were to be deactivated. 
despite both sides withdrawing from the treaty by 2002, all 50 LGM-118 peacekeepers would be removed from service starting in 2003 and ending in 2005. W87 warheads from the missiles were installed on Minuteman 3 starting in 2007, providing them with a more reliable and more powerful warhead option. Yet, even today, the Peacekeeper still lives as Minotaur 4 and 5 research rockets. Both are derived from the Peacekeeper's design, with some even having former Peacekeeper ICBM stages. These weapons showcase decades of research, development, innovations, and achievements. The LGM-30 Minuteman and LGM-118 Peacekeeper both represent decades of nuclear strategy and the pursuit of advanced technologies by men like General Bernard Schriever and Colonel Edward Hall. The Minuteman and Peacekeeper helped maintain global stability during the latter years of the Cold War preventing both superpowers from launching direct, large-scale conflicts against one another that would have certainly cost countless lives. Their legacies of deterrence unbreakable. Both missiles have displays in the missile gallery of the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. With the Peacekeeper retired and a Minuteman III pushing more than 40 years of service, the United States is looking towards the future. The next generation ICBM, the ground-based strategic deterrent, officially the LGM-35A Sentinel, is already in the early stages of development. Planned for deployment in 2028, the Sentinel will replace the aging LGM-30G Minuteman III and use the W87 warhead initially designed for the Peacekeeper until the W87 Mod 1 comes online in 2030. Thank you for watching, especially if you've made it this far. The Minuteman and Peacekeeper represent two of America's most advanced components of its land-based leg of the nuclear triad, and are some of the most powerful weapon systems the nation has ever deployed. Capable of wiping entire countries off the map, the threat of a nuclear retaliation from these missile systems have continued the strategy of deterrence through strength. Always on alert, unseen yet ever looming, over the decades, America's land-based nuclear deterrents, from the Atlas and Titan to the Minuteman and Peacekeeper, have silently defended both America and her allies from nuclear aggression, and will continue to do so with the LGM-35 Sentinel. Both the Minuteman and Peacekeeper, from a very young age, instilled in me a sense of veneration and power, one I hope I have conveyed to you today. Our arms must be mighty, ready for instant action, so that no potential aggressor may be tempted to risk his own destruction. This video goes out to all of the men and women of the United States Air Force as a Global Strike Command and those who served prior in Strategic Air Command. But most importantly, this one goes out to my good friend, Staff Sergeant McDonald. I hope y'all enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. And I will see you on the next episode of Mill Power. Our arms must be mighty, ready for instant action, so that no potential aggressor may be tempted to risk his own destruction.